game's up, Llewellyn. I arrest you for the murder of John Russell and Mary McClure at 150 Liberal Street, Liverpool, on the night of January the 1st, 1935. I have to warn you that anything you say, etc., etc., etc. Um, I've been after you for five years for this, and I may say that this is a moment that affords me the greatest possible pleasure. Just as I was waiting for the handcuffs. Uh, just a minute, Chief. How many L's are in Llewellyn? Four. But you and the children have only got as far as Llewellyn. I've got to get two fingers. Now, Mr. Pippen, ever passed you out, I'm blowed if I know. Inspector Blow. Inspector Blow, been in. No. Then, throwing caution to the winds, I leapt on him single handed. Single handed? Well, go on. You know how to spell single handed, don't you? Yes, but you weren't single handed, Chief. I was with you. Well, it's as good as being single handed. Yes, but it was me that leapt on him. From behind. Look here. Whose life story is this? Well, yours, Chief. I mean, fair's fair. After all, I've given you the best years of my life, and the only time you've mentioned me up to page 298 was that time when the bulldog tore a piece out of my trousers. Well, that showed your true advantage, did it? Anyway, will this satisfy you? Ten minutes later, help arrived in the shape of Sergeant Bingham, and the Saffron Gang was finally rounded up. Thanks, Chief. Not that you did make any difference. <laughs> Well, now we come to the last chapter. We'll leave that blank for the moment, but we'll hit it. The fifth column. The fifth column? That's what I said. But you haven't had anything to do with the fifth column? No, but I'm going to. Listen to this. The Minister of Home Security today assured the government that the best brains in Scotland Yard will shortly be engaged to combat the menace of the fifth column in this country. They are my boy. Inspector Horner's next case. Yes, but it, it hasn't even mentioned it, Chief. No, but it says the best brains, and that narrows it down. Now, let's see, there's Jenkins in Yorkshire, Brown in Ireland. That leaves... Uh, good morning, Inspector Blue. Good morning. Still working on the life story for Titbits, I see. I thought of a good title for it yesterday. Oh? Yes. Whopping Tales of the Yard. <laughs> I'll treat that remark with the contempt it deserves. Anything else, Chief? No. There's an unsympathetic influence in the room. Well, I'll just head up the new fifth column chapter and then I'll leave it at that, eh? Fifth column? How does fifth column figure in the fairy tales? It hasn't yet, but it's going to, eh? <laughs> oh, and who said you were going to be assigned to the fifth column case? A little dicky bird. Oh, well, I should bring that little dicky bird's neck if I were you, because he's singing the wrong tune. I suppose you think you're going to get the job, eh? Never mind, Hornley. Anyway, how could they waste a man like you on a job like that? Why not? Well, who's going to take care of the bottle parties? Well, I'll practically clean those up, you know that? Yeah, with the exception of the one where Bingham goes every night. Well, he hasn't found any evidence yet. No, but he's found a nice little fan dancer. Ooh. Is that right? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Inspector Hornet. Yeah? The Commissioner wants you. Oh? He's got half the Army High Command with him. Has he, though? Oh. Well, I shouldn't worry, blow old men. You'll have plenty of time to spare. I'll hand over that little joint for you to clean up. And if you talk to Bingham nicely, he might give you her phone number. Oh, Bingham. Sir? You can leave in that bit about the fifth column. Right you are, Chief. The fact is, this petty scrounging has reached such proportions that it's costing the army thousands a year. What we've got to do is to set an example. If we can catch one or two other culprits, it'll have a salutary effect on the others. Ah. Who sent for me, sir? Uh, Brigadier Lloyd, Major Harvey of the War Office, Inspector Hornley. How do you do, gentlemen? I've got a rather unusual case for you, Hornley. The War Office are concerned over certain army activities which are proving rather more widespread than we imagine. Now, what we thought... I think I know what you mean, sir. Oh? Well, one reads the papers. Well, the papers only touch on the fringe of it, I'm afraid. Quite. But a detective can read between the lanes. I'm glad you appreciate this importance. As I was telling the Commissioner, this is not just a case of a few tins of strawberry jam. Eh? Hey? This sort of thing's going on in camps all over the country, you know. I beg your pardon? These are depredations from army stores. Deped... Scrounging, on it. Scrounging? But do you mean to say this nothing to do with the fifth column? Fifth column? Whatever put that into your head? Inspector Blow was assigned to that case last week. Blow? As an ex-officer, it shouldn't be difficult for you to get into the run of things again. Are you listening, Hornley? The idea is that you should join the army. What, me? Yes. What, at my age, after all my years of... Temporarily, of course. We'll do our best to see you're comfortable. Well, it's more than I was last time. Still, if you're offering me a commission. Yeah, I'm afraid uh, that is hardly the idea. By joining the ranks and mixing with the men, you'd have a better chance of contacting the offenders. The ranks? It's truth. <laughs> Come on, 
step out. What's the matter with you? Tired out. Well, we're all tired out. But we're not grumbling about it. But I've been carrying these things for the last six miles. By the time there was a changeover. All right, we'll have a changeover. Yeah? Put the gun in your right shoulder. That'll leave your left hand free to carry the other stuff. I'm going to resign. You're not. You've been put on this job and you're going to stick it out. So what have we done in the case? We've been ten days here, marching, drilling in Dublin. And all we've got to show for it is blistered heels and fallen arches. Well, you'll have to prop up your arches, my lad. It's kind of hard day tomorrow. It's kind of hard day. A field day. A 12-mile march with full pack, followed by a three-mile attack over open country. There's some bombing and bayonet work. And if we're lucky, a band of players home to bed. <laughs> I won't do it. I won't do it. British Army or no British Army. I'm going sick. You'll do nothing of the sort. If you start going soft now, you'll give the game away. Yes, but if I can stick it, you can. And if you go sick, you'll have more than the British Army to answer to. You'll have to answer to me. You blokes to the sick parade, file in here. Okay. <laughs> Golf perishing while we pull back. <laughs> uh -oh. Come along now. On parade, you. Double up. What's the matter? Hmm? Well, I don't think I feel very well, Sergeant. In fact, I think I'll go sick. You can't go sick now. Seven o'clock in the morning, so time to go sick. Get on parade. Run along now. You heard what the day sergeant said. Private Lee. Coming. Well, what's the matter with you? It's my blistering feet, sir. I've worn the tread off them. And when Lord Roberts made his historic march to Kandahar, it was the proud boast of this regiment that not a man fell out. Today is the anniversary of that great event. And in view of the excellent march you carried out yesterday, I propose to celebrate today by granting leave to the whole regiment till midnight. for a sick friend. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well. Here's one to be going on with. Oh, you're not there to say that. Down note on a Friday. Mm -hmm. Gentleman of things, eh? What do you think? Well, um, bookie, perhaps. Certainly not. I suppose now is to tell you that I was one of those chaps that scrounged up out of army stores and sell it outside. Come on, you're having me on. I said, suppose, hmm? Did you many of them in here? Can't say I've met any one. Just wondering. There's a lot of scrounging going on, you know. So I hear. Why they don't do something about it beats me. Perhaps they are. The military police? Not them. All they catch is drunks. Found this stuff littered all over the floor. Hmm. How much is missing? Can't say yet, but it's all new stuff, though. Only came in yesterday. None of it issued, eh? That should help. Consignment of pants, all sizes. Tin pilchards. Ever had that brand before? No. Hey, what's it got to do with you? Yes, what are you doing here, anyway? Uh, report it will I do to the medical officer. Then keep your nose out of things that don't concern you. Count up what's left in those cases. And don't make any mistakes. Very good, sir. Blue sauce. Right. Did you get any time off? After we close, it'll be open again. What about taking a punt and having a water crazy tea with me up there? You're not backward in coming forward, are you? Oh, what do you <laughs> say? All right, then. Or oh, both two, outside. That's a deal. But on one condition. What's that? That you let me pay my share. Yes. 
What's bitten you? You're a marvelous thing, Chief. I've been acting a real lassie. Look, here she is. Not bad, eh? One is six for three. The Baldy, with love from Daisy. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm taking her to the pictures tomorrow. The half day. My father's a Presbyterian, too. My father keeps an arm on the shop. Now, listen, I don't want to hear our life history. While you've been making yourself ridiculous, I've been getting on with the job. And now you can help me. I'm onto something. Yeah? Yeah. Here's some salvers of stuff that was pinched last night. And if we can find any of it round here, we'll know who knocked it off. Yes, but they might have come back innocently. Well, the stuff hasn't been issued yet. Now, come on, step lively before they come back. Now, you know what you're looking for? Gents underpants, large size, filtrates and carbolic soap. Now, you take this side. Okay, Chief. I've been through the hut next door, but I drew a blank. understood that we were only pretending to do this. Yes, we understood and the Colonel understood. The sergeant makes it a bit slow in the uptake. Don't worry, really you're playing then. But... Give us an answer, you clumsy flatfoot. Come on. There's only eight more. Still looking for clues, eh? Ooh. Ooh. I always said there were no flies on Hornley, but oh, I take all that back now. What are you doing down here? Come away from your clues and I'll tell you. Have you come down here to make trouble? Well, I've come down here to see you two. Us? You mean you want us to help you with your case? I do. Why? Because there are certain things, Hornley, of which you have special knowledge. Well, I never expected you to admit that, Blow. We knew they'd get into a mess as soon as we left the yard. What's your difficulty? We're very busy, you know. Right, I can appreciate... I can appreciate that. Well, we discovered that information is being coded to Germany. Well, nothing unusual in that, is there? Shortwave transmitter, I suppose. Yes, and what is more, we've discovered the code. Hmm. And now all that's missing is the shortwave transmitter and the blokes who are running it. That's right, but unfortunately they never broadcast from the same place twice. What do you want us to do? Consult the stars for you? Oh, no, I'm not interested in your usual methods of solving crime. What I want to know is how they got hold of a certain piece of information when there were only half a dozen people in the know. Well? And you were two of them. Us? Yes, listen to this. Among other interesting items broadcast to Germany last night was this tidbit. Two Scotland Yard men named Inspector Hornley and Sergeant Bingham are now carrying out secret investigations at Hutlow Camp. What, do you mean to say it's been sent back to Germany? It has, and I want to know who's been doing the unveiling. Now, look here, Blow, let's get this straight. Are you accusing me of a breach of confidence? I'm not accusing you of anything. I'm just making inquiries. Well, it amounts to the same thing. If anybody's been talking, it's certainly not me. All right, well, I'll take your word for it, Hornley. And what about you, Bingham? Have you been talking in your sleep? Hmm? Should I take exception to that remark? So do I. And what's more, I object to you coming down here criticizing my staff. I'm not criticizing your staff. It's beyond criticism. I'm asking a simple question. Well, you've had the answer. Just because some brass head shoots off his mouth in his club, you try to pin it on Bingham. He's worked for me for 15 years, and I know that he's incapable of doing such a thing. All right, all right. I must explore every avenue. Will you explore some avenue down White Hallway? Yes, and don't leave any stones unturned. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Come on now. Who did you tell? Me? Oh, now, here, Chief, you don't think that yes, I... Yes, I do think. Come on, now. How with it? Who was it? Hmm? Well, it was that wee lassie, Daisy. I might have guessed it. Oh, but she's a nice girl, Chief. They're all nice girls. Marta Hardy was a nice girl. Well, what did you tell this bird? Nothing, Chief. She guessed. Don't lie to me. But it's true, Chief. She said that I... 
I looked like a detective. Hmm. Well, that's the biggest lie of the lot. I don't mind you laughing at my expense, but I tell you that Daisy's absolutely innocent. What, after going out with you in a punt? Well, supposing she's innocent. She can still talk? No, 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 no. Not Daisy. Well, what is she? A barmaid. God, let me. Why, the public information bureaus. Oh, by the way, did I hear you say you were taking her to the pictures this afternoon? Hmm? I was, until you landed me into this mess. Well, you're still taking her. I'll fix it up with the Colonel. Well, do you mean that I can sit? What do you want me to do? Well, ask her who she passed the glad news on to, of course. Oh, yeah, that would be very awkward, Chief. Well, it'll be more awkward if you don't. I've lived in the trees for so long. How could I hope to be a success in New York? Can't I teach you, Lalo? Then what would become of Bobo? And Mama the elephant? Every night as the sun sets, I'll sing with the trees for the lullaby. It's sinking now, Lalo. I've been speaking out of turn. <laughs> Say you, I said somebody. Well, you meant me. Here, here, little order, please. You've got no right to go making suggestions like that. Let me tell you, I've got enough to do in my job without gossiping. Yes, yes, I know that, Daisy. But you better pass it on, innocent like. I did not. Here, here, turn it up, will you? You're not in the bar of the Rose and Crown now, you know. Oh, there you are, you see. This is all your fault. Go in. Quiet. Now, take your hands off me, you insulting beast. Quiet. Quiet. Uh, What's going on along here? Don't blame me, blame him. Yes, yes. There you are. Come on out. Don't want none of that there here. I assure you there's been none of... Come on, you heard what he said, don't you? 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 Can I help it if my sister becomes hysterical? Oh, come on, I'll... Good afternoon, Miss Johnson. Good afternoon. I'd like to see Mr. Wilkinson. You didn't make an appointment, did you? No, but one of my back teeth is aching again. Something awful. I think you'll find that quite all right. I shouldn't bite on it for a couple of hours, though. Thank you. Miss Johnson, I don't remember no, making... No, Mr. Wilkinson, it's my back tooth again. You must look at it. I see. Uh, would you mind, madam? I won't give you one moment. Quite all right. Very well. Please step inside. Charles? I've laid out your dinner jacket. Don't forget you're dining at the club at eight. Oh, yes. I'm going over to Penrith to have dinner with Mrs. Sherwood. We'll probably play bridge, so I may not be back till late. Goodbye, my dear. Oh, don't forget to black out. I expect you'll be in first. I won't forget. Why have you come here today? Your next appointment was Tuesday. Do you want that girl to suspect? I had to come. He's rumbled. Who? That yard man, Bingham, that I was telling you about. Did you pass it on? Of course. Well, they found out somehow. He questioned me this afternoon and said someone had been talking. Phew, I'm scared stiff. Where is he now? I left him in the pictures. You sure he didn't follow you? Positive. What am I going to do? Supposing they come and question me? Deny everything. They've no evidence. And don't come here again. I'll contact you as soon as it blows over. Yes, but... Now look here. Pull yourself together. There's nothing to be afraid of. Come on. It often aches like that after filling, you know. It'll be quite all right tomorrow, believe me. I hope so. Now, madam, if you please. Thank you. Come along, Yvonne.
It's nearly six o'clock. Have I an appointment with this gentleman? No, sir. But he was anxious to wait on the off chance of seeing you. May bridge work needs overhauling. And I wondered if... I'm not... sorry, I'm afraid I can't manage it now. My hours are three to six. And I have an engagement this evening. Well, uh, perhaps I could come back later. I'm sorry. My engagement is for the whole evening. Besides, I never see patients out of hours. Oh, if that's your attitude, I'll take my business elsewhere. There are plenty of other dentists in the town who will be only too glad to do a little bridge work after six o'clock. Good day to you, sir. How do you know there's no one at home? He told me he had an engagement. There's also a Mrs. Dentist, but she's out playing bridge. Any servants? One. Female. I went round the back and checked up. <laughs> You're not the only one who's a success with women. I made an appointment to meet her at the Palais de Dons tonight. Yeah. That's got rid of her. Sounds a very mean trick to me. Well, she was married. It serves her right. Ah, this is it. why you should suspect Daisy, just because you got toothache when she left me. I agree, it'd be a natural emotion. What's her surname? Johnson. Johnson. And you shot your mouth off to her yesterday lunchtime. But she couldn't have seen him yesterday. She was on the river with me until five o'clock. And at 5.30 she visits the dentist. Look for yourself. Every time she sees you, she rushes straight to the dentist. Oh, any number of ways of explaining that, Chief. Well, there's only two I know of. Either she's what I think she is, or the way you kiss them knocks their teeth in. Yeah. She was here twice last week. Once the week before. Three times the week before that. Yes, fellow called Weatherby seems to come pretty often, too. And uh, Mrs. Crofter. There's your Daisy again. Supposing you're right. You can't prove anything with that book. Well, we might find something in that safe to tie up with it. What safe? Over there. Twinlock Hector. Mm. Easy. Mm. There'll be a burglar alarm while running around the rim. Cut it. Should he ring? He knows there's nobody at home. Here, go and see who it is. But suppose... Go on, go on, go on. Go on. Is your name Wilkinson? No. Mine's Blankinsop. Oh? I want to see Mr. Wilkinson. Why? Why, what do you think I come to dentist for? Have a haircut? No, I want a tooth out. Eh? Oh, I'm afraid that's impossible. Oh, <laughs> don't talk so dumb. Sorry, but at this time of night... At this time of night, I've been in bed and fast asleep. I hadn't had raging toothache. I tell you, I'm not going till I see dentist here. Come on, fetch him out. Well, now, if you'll just sit down for a minute, I'll... I'll make some inquiries. All right, but look sharp. Joe Wilkins is assistant. That you're in his confidence. Yes, but I think he really does want a tooth out. Well, you never know. Perhaps he's bluffing. Go and find out. 
Well, well, I'm sorry, but uh, Mr. Wilkinson is asleep. I can't help it. All right, I'm his assistant, and anything you wish to have out, you can have out with me. All right, that suits me. Well, where's surgery? Surgery. Yes. Is this it? Here, come on. Yes. Don't hang about. Here, take this. Just sit in the chair, sir, please, will you? Uh, now, let me see. <laughs> nice evening, isn't it? Fine for getting shortwave broadcasts. I don't want any shortwave broadcasts, and I don't care if it's raining cats and dogs. I want this tooth out. Let me see that I enjoy Mr. Wilkinson's full confidence. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. Shall I open my mouth now? Yes, certainly. You can tell me anything you want. Uh, 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 uh. You really want it out? Hey, what's the matter with you? You non compass mentors or summit? You've been here before, haven't you? What's that got to do with it? Well, we just make it a rule only to attend to regular customers after closing time. Oh, dash it all. Do you think I'm going to suffer all night for your silly rules? Here, are you going to take it out or do I have to take it out of you? Your mind's made up. Oh, it's dawned on you. Right, just wait there a minute, please. Very off to now. Oh, what is this, a dentist or a madhouse? Here, are you going to take all this right, thing out? All right, all right. It's coming out. A minute. Which tooth did you say it was again? Ah, 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 ah. Your top teeth are pretty good. They're false, you fathead. Oh. <laughs> so they are. I see that now. They quite took me in for a minute. <laughs> you want the plate out? No, no, just the tooth. Just open your mouth a little wider, please, will you? Hey, how are you doing it? You're not going to take it out in cold blood, are you? Can't have a local anaesthetic. Oh, I'm afraid Mr. Wilkinson always locks up everything like that. Hey, what's that over there? Is that a gas apparatus or not? Yes, that's a gas. All right, then I'll have gas. Quite sure. It is after effects, you know. Compared to what I'm suffering, the after effects will be a pleasure. <laughs> Hope you're right. What's to do? Are you going to give me gas or not? I am. I should hope so, too. I'm sick of sitting here waiting, folks. Yeah. to crack my jaw. No, 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 something went, but I don't think it was that. They must have given me too much gas. I feel very faint. 
Yeah, come on, come on. The fresh air will do you all the good in the world. Uh, I'll take you to a taxi rank and see you in the car. There's nothing to shout about. Do you want to bring that dentist down here? What's happened to the patient? He's gone. He took his tooth out. In fact, two of them. What, do you want two out? No, oh, but I just gave a hefty pull and the other way. Two of them. Yeah. There's nothing in this business. It's money for jam. All you have to do is to turn on the gas. What, did you give him gas? Well, he demanded it. Look. Five bob. Half a crown of tooth. <laughs> Didn't want to pay for the other one, but... The poor man was in no condition to argue. I bet he wasn't. <laughs> have you had any luck, Chief? I have. Here. Look at that. <laughs> Daisy and me in the punt. Uh, turn it over. Sergeant Bingham, CID. Where did you get this? In the safe. Can't believe it. You know, Chief, this sort of thing shatters your faith in women. Well, you could do with a bit of shattering. Yeah, give it to me. But you're not going to put it back in there. I am. But if they find it, that'll make me look like an accessory. Well, you will, won't you? Okay. We're going to leave this place exactly as we found it. Without anyone knowing we've been here. Why, Chief? Aren't you going to arrest Wilkinson? Not yet. You haven't left anything lying around in the surgery, have you? No, no, I've got the teeth in my pocket. I don't want to see them. Talk about a blooming cannibal. Curtains. My patient, Chief. Oh, ask who it be. You. It's the dentist. Look at you. The gas is still on. He's a gunner. Dead. This is awful. But I was here just a few minutes ago. Must have happened when you were seeing your patient off, obviously. Must have found out that we were here. Decided he couldn't face it and come down and gassed himself. Mm. I'd better phone the local police. Wait a minute. Look at these. One shoe is laced across the usual way. On the other shoe, the top three holes are laced crisscross. You can put your own construction in that, I suppose. Well, no man laced his shoes different ways. Someone else put that shoe on his foot. Why? I don't know yet. But whoever did it may be still in the house. Wait here. Of anybody. I'm going to make a search of Wilfred's bedroom and see if I can find anything. I'll come up with you, Chief. No, you don't. We've got no time to lose. Here, take these. Ring up the yard. Give Blue my kind regards and read that list over to him. What are they? The names, addresses, and code numbers of Mr. Wilkinson's so called patients. Tell Blue, since he wants to know who's been talking, there's 40 of them.
Sorry for the delay, Sergeant. Inspector Blow's just gone out. They're expecting him back in ten minutes. Shall I ask him to ring you back? Yes, please. And it's very urgent. This is Mrs. Wilkinson speaking. I want to speak to Dr. Kirby at once, please. It's all right. It's all right. No need to be alarmed. Mm -hmm. Who are you? I'm a police officer. What are you doing in this house? I'm here in connection with your husband. He's dead. That's right. You just sit down quietly for a few minutes. I can imagine how you're feeling. Can you? I wonder. I should be awfully upset, shouldn't I? Aren't you? No. You... you are Mrs. Wilkinson? Yes. But we weren't what is called a happily married couple. You found out that he was a... that he was a... Yes. I told him he'd get caught sooner or later. It was no use. They had some sort of hold on him. Who were they? I don't know. I shouldn't have known anything except that I... I found a letter of his. What did you do? I taxed him with it and... he flew into a rage and... And struck me. You did? Yes. Oh, that was nothing unusual. I said I'd go to the police and he threatened to shoot me. What could I do? What would you have done? Hmm? I really don't know. It's, it's very awkward for you. Could I have a cigarette, Inspector, please? Why, oh, certainly, certainly. No. Now, I'm afraid I've got to ask you just a... just a few questions. You're not going to be brutal to me, are you? Oh, no, no, no. That will hardly be necessary. But I'll expect a statement and... just as a mere matter of formality. Oh, yes, of course. Well, I shan't attempt to hide anything from you. Thank you. Well, now... Do you know what part your husband had in this organization? None. But I'm sure it couldn't have been a very important one. Oh, I'm afraid you're wrong there, my dear, Mrs. Wilkinson. As a matter of fact, I'm quite sure you are. Well, what makes you say that? Well, I have here the names and addresses of 40 of his patients, whom I have every reason to believe supplied him regularly with information. But I can't believe it. Are you positive of that? I found it in a book in his safe. But if he's as important as all that, why did he take his own life? He didn't. Somebody else took it. He was murdered. Oh. Here, here, Mrs. Watson. What's the matter? Oh, pull yourself together. Here, here. Mrs. Watson. Oh, what was? Feeling better in a minute. I can't stay the night here alone, Inspector. Well, I'm afraid I'm on duty. 
But I've got a sister who lives just round the corner. Couldn't I spend the night with her? I'm sorry. I can't allow that. I promise I wouldn't move from there. No, you wouldn't. And if it rested with me, I'd let you do it like a shot. But it, it does rest with you, doesn't it? Well, no, not exactly. You see, I haven't mentioned it before, but I've got an assistant, an associate. There are two of you? Yes. He's upstairs, and I'm afraid he'll want you to come to the police station. Oh. oh yeah. Drink, drink. Oh. Well, it'll be all right. Oh, you answer it, Inspector. Don't worry about me. Inspector Blue. <laughs> yes, this is Bingham. What are you ringing up at this hour for? I decided to confess after all. Certainly not. <laughs> Though, as a matter of fact, it's not unconnected with your inquiries this morning. Hmm? <laughs> well, now, Hornley and I decided that as you were floundering about to give you a bit of help, uh, to put you in the right road, as it were. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I must correct you there. My mother and father were married properly at the Kirk at Paisley. And that remark comes very bad from you after all we've done. Hmm? All right, if you'll just keep calm, I'll tell you. Well, I have here the names and addresses of about 40 people who have been passing information. Hmm? Yes, if you'll just get out your little pencil and paper, I'll read them out to you. You ready? I think I've got a hold of the wrong piece of paper or something. Hold on. <laughs> Mrs. Wilkinson. Mrs. Wilkinson. Sorry, there's been a slight hitch. Yeah. I'll ring you back. Mrs. Wilkinson. Mrs. Wilkinson. Maybe she's got her sisters. Gosh, the books. Mrs. Wilkinson. Mrs. Wilkinson. There's been some pretty rum goings on in this house, I'm telling you. You're telling me. What did you phone, Blow? Yes, I phoned him. <laughs> what did he say? Well, he didn't say anything, Chief, because... Because what? Look, you're quite sure you gave me that list, aren't you? What are you blathering about? That's all I've got, Chief. There's nothing on it. The gear. What the blaze have you been doing while I've been upstairs? I had it in my hand when I first phoned Blow. Well, go on. Well, he wasn't in, and so I put it back in my pocket. I knew it was there when she came in, because... She? Mrs. Wilkinson. So she's here? Well, she was here. Was? Yes. I'm afraid she's gone to... Gone where? Just through that French window. Look here, are you drunk as well as incapable? I told her to stop here, but she must have slipped out when I was on the phone. She's pinched the evidence. But I think I know where we can find her. Where? At her sister's. What's the address? Now listen to me, you big dome vacuum. Hasn't it dawned on you yet that that woman was simply playing you for a sucker? Well, what, what happened then? Well, I had just phoned Blow when the front door opened and I hid behind the curtains. Yeah? Well, she came in, saw the body and rushed to the telephone. She dialed the number and asked for the doctor. What doctor? Kerbishley. Maybe Carbishley. 
And then? Well, she must have seen me behind the curtains because she screamed. So I stepped out. And, and what did you tell you? That her husband was a spy. And that he used to beat her. Yeah, and you sympathized with her? Well, in a way. Good, let me. The woman hasn't been a widow five minutes, but she's fair game to you. Then I suppose you told her about that list. I did mention it. I knew it. She fainted. Yeah, then you helped her out of the settee. Yes. And she pinched the list into your pocket. You went to fetch up some brandy. Water. And she switched the blank sheets back on you. It's as pale as a pike staff. And there's no Kerbishley or Corbishley in the book. But I'm sure it was Kerbishley. You made about as big a hash of this as anything you've done in the whole of your misbegotten career. Here we are, working on a case which has nothing to do with us. You get hold of the star witness and let her go with all the exhibits. Look, couldn't we just slip out like and not tell anybody we were here? Well, after you phoned the yard with the murdered man in the other room... But he may not have been murdered. He was murdered. While you were mucking things up down here, I've been busy. Wilkinson was planning to run away to South America. Passports, permits, all in order. But somebody or other didn't want him to go. So they waited for him upstairs. He came in, was just changed to his slippers, and then nipped up behind him, laid him out, slipped his shoe on again, brought him downstairs, bunged him to that chair and tried to make it look like suicide. How does that sound? <laughs> Doesn't seem to be anything missing. No, oh, except the clue to the murderer, that list of agents, and Mrs. Wilkinson. Apart from that, it's all sewn up. Well, I suppose there's nothing else to do but hand it over to Blow and we go back to the gents' underpants. Now, look here, I don't want to hear that defeated stalk. We're going to search this house from cellar to roof. Now, go on, you start outside. I'll start in here. And if there's a whiff of a clue, we'll smell it out. Hello, what's this? March the 12th. No address. My dear Wilkinson, I am sorry to hear you propose taking a holiday. I feel strongly that a journey would not be good for your health at the present moment. I must therefore urge you to cancel it. Yours, A.K. Sounds like a letter from his doctor. Sounds like. Of course it is. A.K. Kerbishly. The doctor she rang up. Yeah, and it doesn't exist. At least not in the phone book. You see, he might be in another district, Chief. He might. But this letter was posted at Upper Ellingford. And that's in this phone area. So that doesn't help. Hmm. Continuation sheet. Now, who uses continuation sheets? Offices? Yeah, it didn't look like office paper to me. No, more like hotel stuff. How many printers would there be at Upper Ellingford? There can't be many. It's only a market town. Good. Well, we're going to knock them up. There may be only half a dozen printers in the town, but a more bad-tempered lot I never saw. You can't expect them to dance for joy when you get them up out of their beds in the middle of the night. Mm. Don't feel very happy myself. Dragging a man from his rest at three in the morning to rake through a lot of note paper? I ought to be compensated for this. Oh, well, it's not your paper. Yes, it is. Oh? Yes, I printed it for the Westgate Manor Hotel. Westgate Manor Hotel, eh? Yeah, I told you it was hotel paper. Yes, it's the same, all right. Of course it's the same. I printed them a brochure at the same time. Now you can clear out and I'll go back to my rest. I sympathize with you. Terms in season. Hello, it's a fishing hotel. Yeah, pretty posh from the prices. Bingham, we're going to get up early in the morning. Yes? We're taking a fishing holiday. It's time we got our hooks into something. Well, thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Yeah. Morning, boy. Good morning, sir. You two gentlemen after the same vacancy. Vacancy? What, are you full up? Well, one day we are, the next day we're not. If I had my way, I'd give them mistresses and stop all this chopping and changing. Hey, what about our luggage? You brought your luggage with you. Optimists, aren't you? <laughs> you don't look very busy. No, we're not now. They're all out on a paper chase. You did say paper chase? Yes. Got me up at 6.30 this morning. It's this new Mr. Rolfe's idea. He started all these capers. Mr. Jenkins was much more sensible, but he joined up three weeks ago along with Mr. Smart, the science master. I tell you, there have been so many changes here since the war started, I can't keep pace with them. You wait in here. But I might as well tell you, you're not the only ones after this history master's job. 
There's another old bloke in there already. So it's not a hotel anymore. They've evacuated a blooming school here. You know, Chief, I didn't like to mention it before, but, well, I never did think much of that clue of yours. For once in a way, you were right. Cable College, Muswell Hill, London. Notice the prefix. All prefects must be responsible for the blackout of the dormitories. Dr. Alfred Kerbishley, headmaster. A.K. We thought it was a medical doctor she rang up last night. But it was this fellow, a doctor of literature or something. Hmm. This puts a new face on it, the Duchess said, but you had her dial lifted. Yes, but I still don't see anything very sinister in that. Well, it hadn't occurred to you, I suppose, that a woman who's just found her husband dead doesn't rush to ring up a schoolmaster. <laughs> yes, it is a bit peculiar. Now, this is where you earn your oats, my lad. Put that luggage back into the car and drive down to the town. Put up at the local hotel and find out all you can about the doctor. It's a small place and they're bound to know everybody's business. What about you, Chief? Somebody's bound to ask what you're doing here. Oh, I'll say I'm a new boy who's a bit backward. Now, go on, off you go. And don't forget, if there's a barmaid there, when she pours out your beer, don't pour out your soul. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, are you an applicant? Yes. So am I. Really? Uh, my name's Mackenzie. Professor Alec Mackenzie. How do you do? Uh, my name is Nuttall. Uh, Horace Nuttall. How do you do? You may have heard of Mackenzie's History of Europe for schools. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I wrote it. Really? Uh, you haven't actually met Dr. Kerbishley yet, I take it? No, but I rather fancy that's... Just a formality. Oh, well, I suppose there's no objection to my waiting. No, no, not in the least. If it isn't a rude question, uh, what was your last school? Boston. Boston, oh, yes. Uh, Boston. I, I beg your pardon? Boston. Yeah, but isn't that a penitentiary? Yes. But surely a qualification for a master at Boston would hardly be a recommendation to this school. On the contrary, my dear sir, I'm just a man for this school. Why? But they mentioned it in the advertisement, didn't they? The school times gave me to understand that this was an establishment for the sons of gentlemen. <laughs> Is that what they said they were sons of? <laughs> well, I... I hope I'm not here under any misapprehension. Well, it's not as bad as Boston, if that's what you mean. As a matter of fact, they frequently send their good conduct lads here. But you seriously tell me this is a... a corrective school? Well, didn't you know? <laughs> I certainly did not. Oh, there's nothing to be worried about, my dear professor. You may find it a trifle alarming for the first two years, but you get used to it. Well, bless my soul, look who's here. If it isn't young Bingham. Now, there's a fine example of the good conduct lads they sent here. Oh, oh, but they shouldn't let him have a knife. Why not? Well, he's a nice enough lad, but he has bits of violence. As a matter of fact, I remember once at Boston, he attacked the carpentry instructor with a chisel. Good heavens. Do you see... Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know there was anyone in here. That's quite all right, my boy. What do you want? A book, sir. A book? Yes, sir. Help yourself, my son. Thank you, sir. Excuse me, sir. Oh. Oh, let me help you. This one? Yes, please, sir. There we are. Um, thank you, sir. Not at all. You all, all this greatly perturbs me. Uh, I do. Hey, hey, you! Hey! hey give me that back. And don't let me get you doing a thing like that again. Rascal. What's happened? Have you missed anything? I beg your pardon. This is yours, isn't it? That's my watch. Good gracious me. Ah, oh, well. Boys will be boys, you know. Do you mean that he actually... Uh, oh, this is dreadful. Well, you get used to that sort of thing here, you know. Used to it? That's why you're mistaken. I, I wouldn't teach in this class of school for any consideration whatever. What, you don't be to say you're going to turn it up? Yes, I am. Oh, uh, and I'm very grateful to you for enlightening me. Cheerio. Uh, Professor Mackenzie? Who? Who? Uh, at your service. Uh, will you come this way, please, Professor? Dr. Kerbishley will see you now. With pleasure. 
Thank you. We should be very pleased to have you here, Professor. Uh, Weston, the last man, was rather old-fashioned in his method. Oh, really? <laughs> well, you won't find anything like that about me. <laughs> Professor Mackenzie, sir. Dr. Curtis, sir. How do you do, Professor? Welcome to Gable College. How do you do? You'll find us in strange surroundings, but tempera mutanta, nos et mutama in illis. Yes, yes, very apt. <laughs> Please sit down. Yes. I feel very honored that a man of your scholastic reputation should consider my little establishment worthy of his services. Not at all, not at all. How long were you at Hartburn? Now, let me see now, it must be what? Fifteen years, if a day. I see it says twenty, huh? Twenty, was it? <laughs> oh, time does play. Dr. Swan speaks of you in the most glowing terms. Oh, yes, we got on very well together. I was very fond of the old but Swan. Well, I don't think we need to discuss it any further. It seems most satisfactory to me. I take it the salary I mentioned in my letter is acceptable to you? Under the circumstances, yes. Oh, there is just one other thing, and it's rather important. Can you start at once? Oh, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I've got my luggage with me. Really? Well, that removes that obstacle. Right. Well, I think you'll find it very pleasant here, Professor. Eh, hey, Mr. Jennings? Oh, oh, yes, indeed, sir. I'm sure I shall. Uh, it'll be an honor to have you teaching with us, Professor. <coughs> Hello, yes, Dr. Kirbishley speaking. Who? Oh. Well, I'm afraid I can't discuss it now. I'm engaged. I'll send you a school prospectus. But I must see you. I've been trying to get you since last night. Just a minute. Well, I think that's all for the moment, Professor. Mr. Jennings will show you your study. Uh, this way, please, Professor. I've told you before not to ring me here. What is it? But I had to get in touch with you. Something dreadful has happened. I can't very well tell you on the phone. I'm at the Angler's Rest in the town. Well, you shouldn't have left Farnshire without letting me know. I... Oh, I'm so sorry, Doctor. But I wonder if you would let me have my testimonials back. I knew you wouldn't mislead them, but... but I'd rather treasure them. Yes, of course. Thank you. Yes. You must realize it's impossible to talk now. I'll be down there at nine this evening. Until then, stay in your room. Goodbye. I want a room, please. Certainly, sir. Good to see the sun again, isn't it? Yes, it is. Will you be staying here long? A few nights, maybe. You'll want a single room, I suppose. That's right. I've got a very nice room facing the river. Mm. Yes, but I think I'll have the single room. Very good, sir. Um, will you read it to me, or shall I read it to you? You read it to us! Very well. <clears throat> there we are. Evolution of the corn laws. The effect of the uh, industrial revolution, connected with the mechanical invention and the utilization of steam, transformed Great Britain from an agricultural to a manufacturing and commercial country. Uh, uh, everybody understand that? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, well, um, <clears throat> um, the opposition to the corn laws steadily increased. At length, the Conservative Premier, Sir Robert Peel, became a convert to free trade, and in 1846 carried a measure to put an end to the corn laws. By this act, the duty on corn was at once greatly reduced. And it ceased altogether in 1849, with the exception of a registration duty of one shilling per quarter, which terminated in 1869. You know, I don't know about you, but I, uh, I find this a trifle dry. So do we, sir. I thought so. Well, now, but it does mention one very interesting man, Sir Robert Peel, the founder of our modern police force. And a very good job he made of it, too. 
As a matter of fact, if it hadn't been for him, we should never have had the highly efficient organization with its network of detectives, plainclothes men, and coppers knocks, uh, I mean informers, that we have today. <laughs> but still, I dare say that many of you boys, at one time or another, have wanted to be detectives. Yes, I thought so. But let me tell you that it requires more than muscle to make a detective nowadays. Oh, yes. I mean, you have to have powers of observation and deduction. Now, take observation, for instance. I very much doubt if there's a single boy here that could tell me whose car it was that went down the drive just now. It's a head car, sir. How do you know that? Because he always goes out at this time. That's right. Well, now, if he always goes out at the same time, it's probable that he always returns at a certain hour. Has any boy observed what time that is? Three o'clock, sir. What, every day? Yes, sir, because he takes that in a quarter past three. Hmm, you're more observant than I thought. Well, now, let us see if you're as good at deduction. I'll give you a start. Now, if he always goes out at the same time, that is 2.30, and he's only gone for half an hour, it follows that wherever he goes can only be a quarter of an hour's car ride away. Probably less, since he must spend some time at his destination. Now, can any boy deduce where he goes in that time? The village, sir. Uh, what makes you think that? Because I've seen his car there, sir. That's right, parked outside the post office. I see. Still, that is observation, not deduction. Now, let us try to deduce what he does in the post office. Excuse me, sir, but isn't that the headmaster's business? I beg yours. I may take that as being tantamount to a rebuff. Well, sir, I really meant that... Don't apologize. You're quite right, my boy. It's no concern of us what he does in the post office. So as a quid pro quo, if I take my nose out of the headmaster's business, perhaps you'll stick yours in that book and read from where we left off. Doing is they're butting in on a case that doesn't concern them. My case. If you're right, I shall have something to say to Inspector Hornley and Sergeant Bingham laying down on this job without my permission. They better have a pretty good reason for this. Hello. Oh, is that you, Chief? Well, I've stumbled across something very interesting. Uh, no, no, no. It's nothing to do with the scrounging case, but. Well, yes, I know, Chief, but. Yes, Chief. How much would your pension be worth if you retired tomorrow? I don't know. Why? Well, you better start working it out. Yes, that's quite true, Chief, but... But, Chief, that's my last word. And I don't want any arguments. So you can just take the first train straight back to London. Murdered? Who's been murdered? He says that dentist didn't commit suicide. Now, have you any clue as to who's the murderer? You know? Then why didn't you arrest him? Now, that's got nothing to do with it. I've told you before, that's Blow's case. And tell him I resent his interference. Who's talking to him, you or me? Oh, you, sir. Very well, then. Don't interrupt. Registered letter? What registered letter? A registered letter is posted every day to 121 Wessex Street, London. And I want to find out what is going on there. Tell them we think it's the headquarters of the whole outfit. Now, look here. What with two of them jabbling at one end of the line and you hissing in me ear, it would quicker if I went to London after all. The Wessex Street is SW1, you know. Now, don't you shove your oar in. Four policemen's enough on one line without the help of the post office. No, Chief. Lord, let me... No, no. Now, all I want you to do is to get somebody competent to watch 121 Wessex Street until the registered letter arrives and then pounce and catch a lot of them. And afterwards, Ask them to ring up Bingham at Allingford 69, and I'll bag the murderer. Fine. Good night, Chief. Ooh. I can do with a drink after that. What about the post office? Well, it's a bit late at night, but since it's been just an exciting day, I think I'll have uh, a small whiskey and soda. Bingham, order you a small whiskey, will you? I'll have a double. Hello, miss. Uh, ask the waiter to send up two double whiskies and one small one. Sam, one whiskey and two doubles for number two. Right. Oh, and find out what they want to eat. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I believe you have a Mrs. Sutton staying here. Would you be good enough to send out my card? Yes, sir. Take that car to number eight on your way up, will you? Very good, sir.
gentleman downstairs handed that in, Miss. Oh, thank you. You'll be here at nine o'clock. It's nearly ten. I know. It's Carlson. He's dead. I know. He was murdered. So it was you who killed him. You reported to me that he was about to clear off to South America. A man like that's not only useless, but dangerous. Well, all I can say is you might have been a little more careful about it. In what way? It may interest you to know that whilst you were disposing of Carlson, there were two detectives in the house. You sure? I met one of them. Did you find anything? Only a list of our agents in the safe. You needn't be allowed. I played the prostrate widow very successfully. Well, I'll be getting along. I should have closed out my cucumber frame a couple of hours ago. Well, thank you very much for your assistance, Mr. Tomboy. A pleasure. Good night, Inspector. Good night. Good night, Sergeant. Good night, Mr. Tomboy. Hello? Is that you, Audley? It's Blow here. I said, what sort of game are you playing? Oh, listen, I'm in Wessex Street now, and there is no one to one The highest number in the street is 75. Hey, what are you talk? Hey, hang on a minute, will you? Bring back the post office, will you, quick? Uh, Mr. Tomboy! Just a minute. Yes? Yeah. He wants it. Where's your registered letter book? Uh, here it is. Well, oh, you know what I want. Yes. Ah, here we are. Now, this can't lie. I've got the post office registered letter book here. Now, there's been a registered letter sent to Mr. E. Knight, 121 Wessex Street, practically every day for three months. I suppose you can count up to 121. And I don't want any insults. You asked for someone to check up on this, and I've done it. Yes, but I asked for somebody competent. We are competent at the yard since you left, and I'm telling you there's no 121 Wessex Street, and there won't be till they pull down the houses of Parliament and make the street a bit longer. And why on earth don't you stick your strawberry jam instead of... Hello, hello. Oh. There's no such place as 121 Wessex Street. But he sends a letter there every day. There's no such place, I tell you. But why would he send a letter to a place that isn't there? It doesn't make sense. But look, 121 Wessex Street, written by my own hand. Well, I don't care if you wrote it with your elbow. There are only 75 houses in Wessex Street, and 121 isn't one of them. But if registered letters are not delivered, they come back to me. And you never had any of them back? Never. That's why I say, if oh, it's take written that there... Away. Now, that letter was handed in your post office this afternoon. Now, where would it be at this moment? In a sealed bag at Northbury, waiting for the night mail. And where does the bag join the train? Lancaster? No, about ten miles before that, it's caught up by the automatic arm. And where does the night mail start from? Carlisle. What time? 10.45. 10.5. Begum, we're going to Carlisle. Eh? What about the luggage, Chief? Leave it. I'll get you a passport, Helen, and you can go abroad to a neutral country. There must be one left somewhere. Wait a minute. There's a detective who's in the house. Which one? The tall one. The little fellow who they've got in tow is the village postmaster. And I was under the impression that the man with him was my new history master, and I appear to have made a mistake. I suppose there was just a nominal charge for the room, seeing I haven't slept in it. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm afraid you have to pay the full price as you've used the room. <laughs> You're charging me for bed and breakfast, and I haven't had either. Go on, pay up and don't argue. If it was my own money, I'd be adamant. I'm seeing it will go down in expenses, I'll concede the point. They must have found out I was here. If they had, they'd hardly be leaving. No, I fancy they have something else on their minds. Oh, can't you pocket it without counting the change for once? Come on, come on. Good night, Mr. Tomboy. Good night, thanks again. Good night. Oh, good evening, Mr. Tomboy. I wonder if you'd mind obliging me. I know it's after post office hours and all that, but I should be very grateful if you'd break the rules and cash a money order for me. Well, I... <laughs> Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get to the bank today. Oh, well, certainly, Dr. Kirby, with the greatest of pleasure. Oh, thank you very much. I'll run you down to the post office now, shall I? Oh, thanks, yes. Well, it's one of the registered letters for London. I made a mistake about the receipt. Got the addresses mixed up. If I could have it back, I could put it right in a few minutes. It's gone. Oh, oh, very well. The registered letters have already left Northby for the mail train. It's too late to stop them now, Dr. Kirbishley. There's nothing I can do can...
You've no reason to suspect any of your sorters, have you, Joe? No. Of course, I can't say for certain. We keep getting new ones on as the young'uns are called up. But it wouldn't surprise anybody if somebody new came on tonight. I don't follow you, Inspector. For me, for instance. Hmm. Sorting isn't an easy job, you know. It's years before you're any good at it. Well, you're short-handed, and I'm no good at it. You can keep telling me so. Say you've got to give me the second in the morning. That'll fool them. I admire work, Joe. What do you think? I don't know. It's got to work. Now, come on, you're the first master. Who can this substitute me for? When's your run con due for the call up? Any day. Well, if we can stop him before he gets here, we can tell the rest he's had it. What about me? Can't I be a sorter too? No, you can't. You're going to be what you've always been, a passenger. Hello. Send George in here, will you please? Hello. Run has been called up. He'll take his place. Here you go. Job's the name. He hasn't been on sorting for five years. Seven. But he'll be as good as some of you, I hope. The train's coming in now. Look lively there. Sorry, late for dinner, Job. That's all right. Two detectives will be on the train tonight. No, if you're careful, it'll be all right. One of them's tall, bald, looks intelligent and isn't. The other one's short with a sour face, doesn't look intelligent and is. Has he got a heavy lower lip? Oh, well, I've seen it. He's the new sorter. They're working fast. Listen, whatever you do, don't let him get hold of that letter. No, leave that to me. I don't like the sound of it. Gotta go. What are you doing here? Good evening, Sergeant. Perhaps I should introduce myself. I'm the principal of your colleague's school. It was smart of you both to discover that I posted a registered letter this afternoon and to catch a train at Carlisle. But I've an idea the inspector won't find that letter. Oh? Why not? Because you're going to write him a little note and ask him to come along here and see me first. Yeah. And you think I'd fall for a thing like that, eh? Well, I'm uh, hoping to persuade John. Well, you know, it's a very serious thing to point a gun at me like that. For you or for us? For you, of course. Uh, I know all about you. You've both got to answer a few questions. I'm sorry, Sergeant, but as a schoolmaster, I prefer to put the questions. And at the moment, I'm asking you to write that note to Hornley. Do you think I'd do that? I should if I were you. Over my dead body. Isn't that rather an unfortunate way of putting it? I think we can avoid that unpleasantness for the moment. Helen, would you mind relieving the Sergeant? wallet. Careful, Sergeant. 
I'll throw caution to the winds in a minute. That'll be very foolish of you. And his father, then, please. What are you going to do? I spent a considerable period of my youth practicing the art of forgery or suffering the penalties for it. Helen, would you mind? I imagine we shall find an example of your handwriting on your identity card. New sorter on tonight? Well? Look along the train there. Says he's his brother. Asked me to give him this note. Well, it's against regulations. Still, we'll let it go this time. You're still on that lot? Well, let me tell you, if everybody here worked at the speed you're going, this post will arrive in about three years' time. Here. Talk about a nagger. I'll soon be at home with my wife. I've got to go along and see my sergeant. The letter I am after is in the SW hole, number 20. It's addressed to night, 121 West 6th Street. Keep your eyes closed to it while I'm gone, will you? Okay. Okay. I'm a CID man. I wonder if you go in that next compartment and uh, examine the tickets. Certainly, sir. Tickets, please. Okay. No tickets, sir, please. I don't think I've got mine on me. I suspect that I think I'll come with you. I think I've uh, got yours, Edward. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. There you are, dear. Who's in there? Tall, bald-headed gentleman, sir. Looks rather pale. Yeah. Anybody else? A well-dressed man with a long nose and a red-headed woman. Rather pretty. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Anything else I can do for you, sir? No, not just now, thank you. Very good, sir. Uh, excuse me. What's he thinking? I think you've had my credentials. Go on, watch him, Bigham. I'll be back in a moment. There. And don't let this redhead try any more of her tricks. No, sir. It's just an example of the way we work, you know. <laughs> now I'll have my fountain pain back. They are, Corporal. Look out those two. Is what is known as a matter of national importance. All right, Inspector. I ain't a corporal. Well, you will be. Come along, Bingham. I may need your help. So long, Doctor. See you later. Here, where's that registered letter? I mean, which registered letter? The one that was in there. Well, what do, you, what do you want with it? That's my business. What have you done with it? You know, are you accusing me of pinching it? I'm asking you what you've done with it. Well, I'm not going to be talked to like that by an extra man. I'm going to have this out with the head sorter. Well, it's about me. The very man accusing me of... Uh, I should take it easy if I were you. All right, fellas. Here comes Scott and Yard. This is Inspector Hornley of the CID.
the little fellow that never broadcasts from the same place twice. And within 24 hours of laying my hands on the mystery transmitter, I had the whole organization behind bars. Morning, Holly. What a bloke. Still on the last chapter. Making the most of it, I suppose. I am? Oh, I mentioned that you had some connection with the case. Oh. You still haven't mentioned my connection with it. Well, I haven't finished yet. In conclusion, I would like to pay tribute to a man without whose help I could never have achieved this coup. Mr. Tomboy, the postmaster of Upper Allingford. Now, look here, Chief. I've given you the best years of my life. Hello? Oh, what is that? Commissioner for you, Blow. Morning, Chief. The phone is on this crouching case, sir. Since when? Oh. What? Me at my age? That's right. I suppose I'll get a commission. No, no, private. Very good, sir. And don't think this is a pity job, Blow, old man. I mean, this isn't just a case of a few tins of strawberry jam. Oh, no, no, it's costing the country a thousand a year. And here's a few clues to be going on with. One pair of gents underpanties, large size, one tin of pilchards, and one bar of carbonic soap.